Hello everyone, I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Vince! And it's time once again to recommend stuff. Vince, what do you recommend today? Today, I'm going to recommend a little 12-inch fish person. <laughs> I'm going to recommend the uh, Sideshow Collectibles Abe Sapien 12-inch, otherwise known as the 1-6th scale. You're starting to look like a huge, giant, major figure collector on this show, man. Uh, as it turns out, I suddenly thought, wait. I can recommend figures. So uh, we have like loads of videos where Vince recommends nothing but like comics and movies and, and movies, books. And then all of a sudden there's just this long string of figures. Yeah. I'm not criticizing. It just it just suddenly occurred to me. I was like, wow, everybody's going to think that Vince has this massive figure collection. As it turns out, my figure collection exists solely behind us. Actually, that's not true. I do have some stuff. A couple that, things in some other places. Right? That exists elsewhere. This is true. Sideshow Collectibles! Uh, there's a Hellboy in this line. Uh, this guy is much more affordable than either of those. You can go on Amazon. I just found this guy on Amazon for about 50 bucks. Actually, I picked this guy up for ridiculously cheap at a garage sale. Oh, yeah! Yeah, I didn't buy it. My girlfriend bought it for me. For uh, It was either anniversary or Valentine's Day. It was one of the two. She called me and said, Hey, you should get Logan, because his girlfriend calls him Captain Logan. Hey, Captain Logan. <laughs> You should totally go to this yard sale. And I bought so much stuff at that yard sale. Yeah, we bought quite a lot of junk. And uh, that junk was otherwise known as treasures. Don't judge us! So My I'm stuff kidding. was awesome. I don't know what you're talking about. My, my I had stuff, a lot of in-package figures and stuff. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. My stuff is super awesome. Anyway. Sorry. Yeah, but uh, yeah, you can get a Crowenin, which we is also much more expensive. Sales. <laughs> Indeed. I think the Crowenin was like 200 and the Hellboy is like 300. They're, they're really expensive figures. This guy's on okay. Amazon for me. I just don't know, like, Hellboy, like I ought to. What was the first character you just uh, said? Crow Anna. He's the guy with those blades and that mask. Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. Now I know who the you're talking about. The guy. Yes, I, could, I did not know what his name was. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm awesome. saying it correctly. It's it's like K-R-O-E-N-E-N -E -E or something. Oh, I don't doubt Crowen. it. I just didn't know what his name was. But, uh, yeah. What a really neat character. What a really neat character. I think this guy comes with an alternate head, so he doesn't just look like he's uh, outside breathing, you could also give him his regular head. Uh, I believe that's true. I have the box somewhere in storage that's a little hard to get to, so I'm showing you what I have available. But uh, he comes with this little nifty, leathery feeling belt. I mean, it's supposed to look like leather, and I sincerely doubt that they're actually leather. They look more like plastic up close. Anyway, uh, his feet, his toes are slightly posable by pure virtue of, uh, yeah, feel it. What's, what's interesting about it is that uh, yeah. they have the foot, and I, I'm pretty certain this is the case. I, of course, I'm not going to cut off his boot or anything to find out, but there's no toes in there. It's just because of what the boots are made out of. His feet are slightly posable because of that, so you can bend the boot. And, uh, yeah, the, this isn't plastic. This is actual cloth. And uh, he's pretty posable. I mean, you can turn just about everything on this guy. And I, I think it's really neat. comes with a stand that says Hellboy on it. Hellboy. And uh, I'm, I'm, I was so jazzed about this thing. It was a really, really cool gift. I really like that these 12-inch uh, figures come with stands a lot of the time these days. Yeah. Uh, the Sideshow ones seem to, seem to almost always have that. Yes. The really expensive figures, I think, usually come with them. And, you know... By George, they oughta. Yeah, they yeah, oughta. <laughs> if you're going to spend over 100 bucks on a figure, that ought to give you a way to stand it up. Yeah, you don't want it to fall down and lose all, all of its pieces. Because they always come with a whole bunch of stuff, and they, sometimes they're kind of semi-breakable, because they're, cause they're, a lot of them are pretty elaborate. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean like, yeah, oh, it's yeah. still just a figure, but you wouldn't want to drop that guy. Something else that's neat is the belt actually is a functioning belt. It's... Oh, wow, it, it unsnaps? Yeah, it has oh, little holes neat. for the... I mean, granted, you got to be ginger with it, because you could break it, but... Uh, it's kind of neat. You got to be freckled and redheaded with it, otherwise you could break it. The, uh, sorry, um, <laughs> I, I guess I'm required to go. Ha ha. Uh, Tee hee. But yeah, the sculpt on his face is great. Yeah, the sculpt on everything is great. I mean, there's even sculpt in his palm. Like you know, there's so many figures where the palm oh, is. Oh yeah, yeah, just just yeah, kinda, his there, fingers yeah. are not poseable. But uh, so, if that's a drawback to you, then you could consider it a drawback. I personally, I would be cool with. 
my figures being completely unposable, if they were just little statues, I would be happy with that. Yeah, what I like about this, though, is that it's it seems... If, if, if you don't mind me saying yeah, so, it, it, it seems that he is that it's it's one of those things where he's intended to be in one particular kind of pose, but then you can pose him in different things within what they want you to do with him. So like he's got his hand like this, and they were cool enough to give it to give it that um, joint yeah. there. So like he could be he could be showing you something, he could be waving you over someplace. He could he be could, eating an apple. He could face palm. I mean, you, know, you can do all kinds of things. And um, so so I'm just saying that that even though they didn't give you the the, the, the finger movement, they gave you the possibility in the other places to do a lot of neat things within the pose. Yeah, and I think it's worth sacrificing finger movement for all of his neat little clear webs. Yeah. Oh, good point. Which you couldn't really have. Yeah. Sideshow collectibles. Ape Sapien. I saw him in the box before you pulled him out, but I had no idea how good of a figure he was. It's pretty. I thought he looked great in the box. He he he's phenomenal outside of the box. I've recently come around to pulling out my uh, my twelve inch figures because they're so much prettier outside. You, you gotta. They're too. They, they look too good. So I have this two face here and that one over there that I actually recommended. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and then this guy. I would love to get my hands on the uh, DC Direct Aquaman figure, and also the DC Direct. Shazam figure. Well, Captain Marvel. Figure. I've not seen that one. Uh, they're both very pretty. Yep. What do you recommend today, Cap? Well, it's still Tick Month, Vince, so today I'm going to recommend something else Tick-related that I'm not going to do a full review on. Uh, that's what I'm doing this one month with recommends. Today I'm recommending the Tick Mighty Blue Justice. This is a companion book to the cartoon show, is what this is. This is kind of the, the, the Tick cartoon episode guide, sort of. But it's um, but but what, what's fun about it is that the contrivance is that it's all from the Tick's perspective, so it's like the it's like the Tick's battle notes <laughs> in book form, and it's kind of fun. So a lot of it a lot of it in the in, in the back is just a lot of character dossiers and things like that, and uh, it goes through the entire series, um, or at least the majority of it. Um, I haven't looked through this in a long time, um, so you just you know flipping through it a, a little bit just before this. It's been a couple years since I've really look real close at this. But yeah, this has a bunch of third season stuff toward the back, so yeah, it looks like it goes all the way through. Um, I'm slightly surprised that the tick knows how to write. Yeah. Write, yeah. read. Although, although, I do, although I do have to say that there are a couple places in the, in the, the uh, cartoon show where he does, so we, we, do, we do know at least within the... Well, I just thought his brain was a little on the smooth side. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, right, which he, which he actually says. Um, there are a lot of uh, like, like, like fun little uh, fake interviews and then a couple that actually come just verbatim from the show that they just lifted and put in this book. That's, uh, that's pretty neat. Which is which is kind of fun. Uh, wh one of the things I really like is there's this bit uh, how how to be how to be a superhero. My seven step program to superness. Uh, and and so and so then he uh, tells you all these things you have to do if you want to be a superhero. And um, I'll paraphrase a couple of these things. But uh, do, you, do you have any superpowers? This is number one. If you do, then that's one big important plus. My power of nine and vulnerability helps me out every single day. Four-legged man has four legs. That's a pretty nifty power. Mighty Agrippa is super strong and can fly. Fish boy just looks full-on weird. A good superpower on its own. See, there are lots of different superpowers that you can have. Think hard and try to see if you have one. I so. have a few friends with that same power as Fish Boy. <laughs> And then he's like, uh, if you don't have powers, you you can you can use equipment. You can still be a superhero. Uh, you know, choosing a superhero name, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then there's this great bit um, where where you've got this page where you choose different things from a column, and then it gives you your catchphrase. So uh, I, I am the blank 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 of blank. So there's four columns, and so like if we pick one at random, it's like it's like I'm the able mast. Cattle drive of honor. <laughs> so that's kind of fun. Um, and then they've got uh, uh, I don't know. It's it's just a lot of the tick talking about his life, and uh, it's really comprehensive uh, for, from the TV show. I'm surprised by uh, the show only had 36 episodes, and it's really cool how much stuff uh, uh, he managed to pull from here. Pretty pretty much every bit of trivia you could possibly think of is in this book uh, from that from that show. Um, so it's a lot of fun to look at if you know it as well as I do. It's a lot of fun to look at if you don't know it all that well. Um, uh, if, if, you've, if you've only seen things uh, once or if you've missed some episodes, it's kind of a fun thing to kind of, to kind of look through and um, be like, oh, God, where was that character? That's bizarre. 
and you know it's the tick, so a lot of it is bizarre. Or if you have the uh, the cartoon shows on DVD and you're wondering where that character came from because it wasn't actually on the DVDs. And this is fun. They put a yeah yeah well, and they only put the and, and they only put the first two out. They never even released the third. I guess the first two didn't sell well enough, and then they left a couple episodes off. They left one episode off the first and one off the second. Yeah, that sucks. My theory was always that. That uh, they were trying to even out the episode count so that when they put the third season out, they put those two back on. Um, was my guess, but I guess we'll never know now. So anyway, because the third season had like two less episodes than the other two seasons did, I thought that that, that, huh. that it was that, that it was a bit of a coincidence that that, that those that, that those numbers lined up that way. So I thought maybe that's what it was. Um, but what's really irritating this is neither here nor there. But the, the the episode they left off of the second season is one of the only really kind of important for continuity episodes in that season, and they left it off, uh, that's Alone Together. That's the one with Omnipotus, where he eats a bite of the moon at the end of the episode. The rest of the season, when you see the moon, it's got a bite taken out of it. So if you're watching this show and you've never seen Alone Together, it's got the CH and the A from Shareface through, through first season. And that was the first episode of second season. They cut, they, they cut it off on the DVDs. So if you, if you watched first season, bought the second season, and then started watching, all of a sudden, there's a bite out of the moon. When did that happen? So anyway, it's kind of irritating. Uh, but this is cool. I recommend it if you can find it. Um, Obviously, uh, well out of print for a long, long time, but um, I'm sure uh, there's some folks on Amazon or eBay that still have it. I haven't looked into it to see what the average going price is, but uh, anyway, that's it. Tick, Mighty Blue Justice, really fun. Dave Sapien, Mighty Blue Fish Man. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for watching us recommend things, and we'll recommend something for you once again next week. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Vince. See you next time.